Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakurash, which is to say the name of the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew tongue. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And I also want to send out a hearty shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so and efforts of waking up the hopefully elect of the nation of Israel. This is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone, Miami, coming back at you in another spiritual spill. And as usual, none written down, just flowing through the spirit. And at best, I'll quote precepts. Well, actually, at the end of this one, I'm going to bring out precepts um, because uh, this is uh, the, the fourth part, or final installment, you know, of my surgical testimony, you know, that I had been going through, going all the way back to, um, uh, man, it's been, it's, been a, it's been a long road, but um, going back to April, okay, I forget which date, you know, because it's a lot that's taking place, you know, but, um, you know, like I said, you know, I would postpone for a couple of weeks until uh, I actually met with the uh, the Eye Institute, Basketball, my Eye Institute. And, um, you know, within those two weeks, <laughs> you know, a few things transpired, you know, that were, that were extremely spiritual as well. Um, I would say maybe a week or the week after I had did the last spiritual spill, um, you know, uh, we received, I received a call from the I Institute. Okay. Um, and I could have went anywhere, you know, but, um, seeing that the doctor had referred me to them, you know, just by the, the, the vibration or the bond that it's so-called has with my mom. Um, he wanted me to have the best, you know, to, uh, you know, get tests run and everything because that tumor, uh, you know, was uh, a decent size, you know, pretty much almost like a golf ball. And it was behind my eye and uh, tangled up into my optic nerves. And, uh, you know, it did damage. It did, it did a lot of damage. But he called Halal Yom Lai Yahweh Shmi Al Shai. That uh, he was able to remove all of it, you know, according to what he said. And, uh, you know, the way I felt prior up until now is night and day. You know, absolutely night and day. I, man, I'm extremely thankful. Um you know, my frontal lobe. Okay, I'm able to discern things, able to memorize things that I couldn't. You know, I just was chalking it up to old age, but no, it was actually a mass, you know, that was resting on my frontal lobe, okay, that was uh, actually, you know, <clears throat> very, very close to my pineal gland, which we know is our, our way to uh, our connection with the Heavenly Father, you know. So, um, you know, he referred me to them and then they gave a call and, um, you know, they had scheduled me, you know, for, uh, because a, hey, at that, that place, you know, like I said, for truth's sake, they're number one in the nation. Okay. But there's some, there's, <laughs> there's a price to pay for going to the number one eye institute in the nation, which is your time, you know? And, um, you know, uh, when they called initially, you know, I was out taking my jog or my walk or whatever. And uh, I told him I'll call him back, you know, once I got back to the house. And I came back and I called. I uh, had my uh, my, uh, my rib to call because she actually is connected with them. She's an operator for their system. And um, so uh, she called and she was able to get me an appointment, uh, which was last Monday. Yep, last Monday, June the 12th. And, um, you know, we got the earliest appointment because, <laughs> put plainly, it's an all-day thing, okay? Or at least at least four hours. It's a four-hour bid, you know, if you go to uh, that eye institute. And, um, you know, but I had already swallowed the pill, and I, I was understanding that the most high was working and willing and dealing. And, you know, I just, I just had to trust the process, okay? Like the scriptures say, we walk by faith. And not by sight, you know. And like I said, I was able to ingest that pill. So, whatever, you know. I'm off from work. I ain't, I ain't got shit to do, you know. What I'm saying outside of, you know, doing the work, you know. So, um, you know, maybe a week after uh, we scheduled the appointment, they called. Well, they didn't even call. Okay, 
uh, and this is how pompous they are, you know, as an institute. Um, they didn't even call and let me know that my appointment got canceled. Um, luckily, oh, Salakia, not luckily, okay, through the spirit, <laughs> Salakia, my, my, my real, checked my chart. You know, she has access to the charts, and she checked my chart and saw that they had canceled the appointment. You know, so she told me, and I was like, you know, and I, initially, the first thing you think is Shaitan, you know, like, but then I prayed about it and, um, you know, reached out to my mom because what happened was the week, and I skipped this part, Salakia, the week uh, before I had, no, the week, the end of the week after I had scheduled the appointment for June 12th at 8. Um, matter of fact, Salakia is a lot. So let me, let me, let me go back. Okay. Um, maybe about four weeks ago. Yeah. Maybe about three, no, about three and a half weeks ago. Um, my, my rib reached out to, uh, to the, uh, Institute and they, they said, uh, the, the nearest appointment they had was in August. And, you know, like I said, I got a number of time and patience is a virtue, but I was looking at it as in the process of me getting corrective lenses so that I can get back to doing what I need to do and mainly driving, you know, and um, that weekend, maybe my girl scheduled an appointment, maybe that Tuesday. So that, that weekend, my mom was bringing my sons back. Uh, from an outing that they went on. And um, she asked, she said, oh, did you schedule the appointment? Because I had forgotten, you know. I had, she said, did you ever schedule the appointment? And I was like, yeah, they said August. And my mom was like, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, one of her colleagues told her, look, if you run into any problems scheduling an appointment with Baskin Palmer, just let me know and I'll, you know, work some magic, niggerize that thing. You know, understand me. <laughs> so um, um, my mom told her and sure enough, you know, now it brings us back to where, you know, where I was. So uh, she was able to get us an appointment uh, for uh, June 12th at 8 p.m. And like I say, a, a week after that, uh, that's when she checked and saw on the U chart, uh, on the chart, you know, that they had canceled my appointment. So, um, and it said why. It said because they didn't accept my insurance, you know, so... You know, now it's like, what, what, what next? You know, and I was like, you know what? We could just go to, you know, the other uh, 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 ophthalmologist, okay, that I initially went to, who, you know, through the spirit of power, Yahweh Shemiah Shah prompted me to go get an MRI. And, um, you know, <clears throat> so, um, but the, the spirit was saying, nah, go to them, you know, go to them. And, um, so, uh, I, I talked to my mom and I, I didn't really want her to like, you know, be trying to pull strings left and right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I told her what happened and she said, well, I guess just call up there and see if, uh, you know, tell them what happened. Your appointment got canceled and see if you can get that appointment back. And I said, well, you know, why not? Cause I didn't want to, you know, her putting her neck on the line like that. And, um, so I called back and, um, you know, initially, you know, I called, uh, you know, one of their, their, uh, their, their hotlines or whatever you want to call it. And we spoke to a dude and, you know, um, pretty much decided that, you know, we were just going to pay out of pocket, you know, cause you know, the, obviously everything is up your how about you mouth shy, but, um, you know, they, they're number one in the nation for a reason. And, um, you know, I reached out to my mom and my pops and they were like, you know, we'll help you out. We'll, we'll, we'll pay out of pocket, you know, cause this is something that you need done. You know, like I said, to get back going, get back in the swing of things. And, you know, if my eyes could be corrected, you know, so, um, you know, we agreed that we'll pay out of pocket and, um, you know, we called down there and <laughs> man, <laughs> Babel Yawan, but Babylon, man, fuck. Excuse my language, but um. So we called and they were like, uh, "If you're gonna pay out of pocket, it can range you anywhere from two hundred dollars, no, five hundred dollars to two thousand dollars." 
And and the reason why is because they were gonna run a lot of different tests on me, you know. And um, you know, so we agreed. And um so now, you know, calling back to see if I can get that appointment, get back in that slot, you know. So when I call and guess who answers the phone? Mm hmm Keisha, right? <laughs> So uh, I answered. The, she answered the phone. Answers the, answers the phone, and then I go. I proceed to tell her uh, what happened, and uh, that I would. And I was like, you know, could I? Is it possible that I can pay out of pocket? And she was like, Oh no, your your appointment was canceled. I'm, I'm, I understand that. I told you that. <laughs> he should probably eating Pringles and chewing bubble gum and shit. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I was like. Uh, no, no, no. I said, I want to pay out of pocket, but I'm wondering, can I get back into that same June 12th slot? And she put me on hold and I was like, uh oh, she gonna polish her fingernails or some shit. But I say, no, 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 you're in the wrong spirit, Karab. So I sent up a quick prayer. And uh, lo and behold, she came back on the line and she said, yeah, we can give you that appointment at um, June the 12th, but at 12.45, okay? And you know, I was like, hey, call her lawyer, like, y'all about Shemal Shah. You know, but my real was like, oh, 1245. You're going to, you, you won't, you probably won't get out of there to, to late, in the, late in the evening. And I was like, you know what? It is what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm just rolling with the punches and thankful that the Heavenly Father is still, you know, working things out for me. And, um, you know, a day passes and I, I talk to my mom, I tell her what happened. And she was like, um, well, you, you try calling back and see if you can get an early appointment. And then, you know, the carnal side of me is like, you know what, maybe you, you might, well, the spiritual side of me, Salakia, was like, well, maybe you're being a little overzealous or you're not accepting or receiving what the Lord has planned for you, okay? And then the flip side of it was like, hey, all they can do is tell you no. OK, and obviously that was the spirit. So, you know, I called back two days later and this time uh, uh, Maria, Maria answers the phone. OK, and, um, you know, I tell her what happened. Look, my appointment got canceled and then I was able to squeeze back into that slot. But at 1245, I'm wondering if I can get an earlier time. And uh, she said, no, your appointment, August. Oh man, look at this bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Take a deep breath, and then I, you know, try to do it in the calmest manner possible. And I said, no, no. Uh, I just spoke with a representative two days ago, and they put me down for August. The, I mean, Salakia, June the 12th. You know, and um, you know, at 12:45. So I don't understand what you're telling me. And she was like, no, I don't see it here. I'm sorry. And I'm like, man, so I'm, you know, my temperature's boiling now. And then, um, you know, like, well, can you check to see? Because this, this doesn't make sense. So she put me on hold. And I'm like, uh-oh. Maria's about to eat some chicharrones and act like she's making moves for me. But once again, snapped out of it, sent up a prayer. Went, came in the house because my real was sitting in the car, so I gave the phone to her. And I came in the house and then I came back into the car and she was like, yes, they say you can get June 12th at uh, 840. Uh, no, 830. Okay, which, hey, can't beat it. So, hey, call her lawyer. I'm like, y'all about Shamal Shai. And what I took from that and what I told other brothers is, you know, obviously we're not nitpicking for the color car we want with the interior. Obviously not. Okay, this, is, this was for my health. And what I learned in that scenario is... Like uh, like our Lord Yahweh Shah said, it says anything that you ask in the Heavenly Father's name, he will reward you. Okay, roughly paraphrasing. And that's what I took from it. Brothers, hey, be specific about what you want, man. And of course, things that pertain to spirituality and things that will help you, okay, uh, 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 help you along the walk, okay? And it was, it was, it was, it was absolutely a pa because, you know, Satan was trying to, work his way up in there and, you know, make things go awry. But I, you know, I kept the faith, you know. So fast forward, you know, uh, until that, up, up until last Monday. So I mean, the real, we get in the car and uh, the Friday prior, 
you know, I go to uh, uh, open her door, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and get something out of the car, and I notice nothing's coming on. So, <clears throat> you know, I put the key in the ignition, turn it, nothing. And I'm like, wow. So, you know, she ended up having to change her battery. So we changed the battery. Okay. And then, um, you know, everything's running fine. And then, you know, Monday before the appointment, okay, we, uh, you know, she swings by a uh, little coffee shop, Dunkin', to get a little coffee or whatever. And as soon as we get there, I mean, we get there, we go, she goes in and gets a little coffee or whatever, and then comes back out, crank the car, nothing. And I'm like, wow, wow. And then prayer, you know, send up prayers, call my pops. He was out and about, he was en route. So he was able to come uh, grab us and, you know, uh, my rib, since she's connected with them, she called one of her coworkers and told him, uh, to, told her to give her the number to the main line to the office and she was able to get that line and called and told him that we would be about 20 minutes late and um, you know made a few moves and you know ended up having to get into a, my mom's uh, uh, truck and uh, you know we were able to get there you know we got there maybe 10 minutes after you know 840 you know uh, the appointment was at 830 and um you know, so praising the Lord within that, you know, because Satan was Satan was busy. But what I understood, what I had to understand that Yahweh Bashim Al Shai is busier and not busier, okay, uh, uh, being efficient, okay, and that's who Shaitan works for, okay. So, um, you know, get there and oh, yeah, there, there is a shitload of people. <laughs> but like I said, I had already swallowed that pill, you know, and then, um, we go in to do, we do the different tests and, um, you know, eventually around about 240-ish, we get there at 840 and 240s. Now, it wasn't just sitting there waiting on the doctor to come. I did tests all throughout the day, but uh, about 240. So we were there from 8 to about 3-ish, you know, we left at 3. So I actually see the doctor, okay, um, and um, a gook, <laughs> but um he tells me that, um, you know, some would take it as bad news, but mm -mm, mm -mm. The, the spirit would not allow me to take that as bad news. Okay. It's just a part of my walk now, you know, but, uh, he basically came and said, Hey, Hey, you, you're, you're technically legally blind. I know that you can still see things, this, that, and the third, you know, but, uh, as far as benefits and things of that nature, if you wanted to go that route, you know, we can sign off on it and, you can go that route, you know, but uh, being the type of worker I do, and I work for my father, you know what I'm saying? We do uh, property management, you know, pretty much plumbing, carpentry, you know, a a anything that needs to be done in the house, you name it, you know, we, we can do it, you know, not not the best, you know, but we make a living, you know. And, um, you know, when I told him that, he was like, well, seeing that, uh, you know, you, you work for your father, you know, because a uh, regular business you know, they would tell you, nah, you know, you're too much of a uh, a hazard. But prior to the surgery, you know, I still was working with, with, with my father and working efficiently. You know what I'm saying? It just got to the point where I, I stopped driving and he would, you know, I, I would ride with him or have others drive uh, to different jobs. You know, so it's something that I was already used to anyway, you know. But um, so in my mind, I'm like, man, I sat in line, I, I did all this just for them to tell me that I'm legally blind and it's not too much more that they can do for me, you know? And um, because what happened is you have fibers in the back of your eye, or basically fiber optics, and they basically send information to the brain and that tumor had destroyed a lot of those fibers. Okay, you're supposed to have over a million of them. And he didn't tell me how many I, I, I have now, but it's it's not, where where it should be and um you know he uh basically said uh you know uh as far as corrective lenses eh, we can give you a little bit of help and really that's all i need all i need is a little bit you know what i'm saying because even once the tumor was removed because it was pretty much tangled up in my my uh, optic nerves and putting pressure on my eyes so just from them removing that my vision has gotten a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, uh, 
like I said, I was like, man, I waited in line, this, that, and the third. So I asked him, I said, is there any way I can, you know, get a corrective lenses? He said, I ah, could do a little something, but let me hook you up with my colleague. And went in with her, and it was like the most I put the spirit on her. And she, she took her time with me, man, to, uh, you know, figure out the best option, you know. So pretty much I have to wear two pair of glasses, one for far and one for near, you know. But, hey, call to wild, man. You know, I, I take it as the mercy and the grace of the heavenly father you know so it, take it how it comes and um like i said that mindset of oh i waited in line all this time no 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 okay it was for them to tell me exactly where i was at you know and um for the for them to you know take in consideration that i want I, that little bit better that i can get i want it and to the uh the female uh ophthalmologist she went the extra mile to figure out what I would need, you know, because usually they have glasses called progressives where, you know, like in the old days, bifocals, where you have a line in the middle. But nowadays they don't have the line. They're called progressives. OK, and pretty much through the top lens, the top half of the lens, you see distance. And then the bottom half you read, you know, but she said, nah, I want to give you a full lens to read with and a full lens to see far with. So. Hey, call hello and lie y'all by Shimmy I was shy, man. So, yeah, that's where we at with it. And like I say, most would take it as bad news, but uh, uh And the reason why is because they can't account for the spirit, okay? And that's the first thing my mom told me when I told her, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She said, well, how you feel about that? I said, I'm good, you know? Hey, why do you how about Shimmy I was shy? And she said, right, because they don't, they don't know what God can do, you know? So... That, hey, that was all the motivation I needed, but I had already told myself that, and then brothers are praying for me, you know what I'm saying? So me telling you uh, this is me just telling you, you know, for truth's sake. Like, I've been telling everything else. I got to keep it 100, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, we just going to keep waiting on these prayers, man, okay, because they can't make account for that. And I know brothers are praying for me, and the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So, hey. Hey, we're going we gonna to wait on the Lord's mercies, okay? And uh, also, okay, Lord willing, you know, I endure to the end, or we endure to the end, and hey, we get new bodies anyway, you see? So it's called to wild, you know? So, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much that's pretty much the, the, the tail end of it, man. And, you know, for the most part, I feel excellent, man. You know, uh, I haven't told man, I feel brand new. But I was like, no, 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 no. You know, when you when you gave your life over to Yahweh Shai, Okay, your how about Shimei was shy? That's when you became a new creature in Hamashiach, you know. And obviously, you know, but as far as you know, being tumor free, man, which had been plaguing me, probably going all the way back to 2015. You know, I started actually camping in 2014. Okay, and I woke up around about 20 late 2011, 2012. You know, but um. It was a hindrance the whole time, you know, hindsight 2020. And now that it's gone, I'm able to do a lot of things that I, I wasn't able to do. A lot of rationing, a lot of deduction, okay? Um, a lot of multitasking, you know, got a lot of energy, want to do want to do things, can't sit down, you know what I'm saying? Working on my yard, doing this, doing that. And I just, hey, I'm just extremely thankful. Hey, the water Akim for the prayers. And uh, call hello, you know, how about Shimei Shia, man? I feel amazing, man. And uh, that thing was plaguing everything. My my skin, my nails, my eyes, you know, the discoloration in my eyes, uh, my teeth, uh, my, you know, <laughs> to, to your mind, but my bowel system, everything was out of whack, man. You know, so, hey, I'm just thankful that the Heavenly Father stepped in because I had been praying the whole time, man. When it's pretty much when I got diagnosed, pretty much when, my smell and my taste, and that's another thing I can't smell or taste, you know, but hey, call it to wild, man. And I've been dealing with that since 2015, so, you know, it is what it is, man. And prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So that's what we, 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 we hanging our hat on. And the scriptures all, and I always tell brothers this, man, okay, within the camp, we, after we finish praying, I say only believe, okay? And I have no choice but to, we have no choice but to, okay? I've witnessed miracles being performed in our camp, miracles being performed on me, Prior to this, this whole surgery, prior to this, I had an ulcer and, and brothers prayed on me and it, it's gone. You know, hey, call hello, I'm like, y'all about Shemar Shai. So only believe, brothers, only believe, okay? Keep the faith. And that was the reason for me sharing this with you, brothers, not to say, look at me, no, 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 because what did I do? Nothing. 
okay? Everything was done via Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. All I did was keep the faith and pray, you know, and only believe that he would heal me one day, okay? That's all I did, you know? All praises be to the Heavenly Father and His Son, okay? So, like I said, I got a few precepts. I just want to close this thing out with. And this one, I, I brought... Uh, uh, in one of the other shows that I did, this is uh, but I'm gonna bring it again. Uh, matter of fact, let's get this first. Let's get this first. Okay, let me see. Bear with me. This is Sirach chapter 2, verse 1. It says, My son, if thou come to serve Yahweh Shimei Shai, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Okay, and that's pretty much the introduction to coming into this truth, man. Okay, you're going to be tempted on all levels. And me going through what I went through was merely a temptation. Okay, temptation for what? To get me out of here, man. To, to, to get my mind off of the goal, off of the focus, which was Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And really all it did was make me praise him even more. Like the Apostle Paul said, um, um, when I am weak, that's when I am strong. Okay? And I was weak, man. You know? I, I was weak. You know? But I knew what I had to do. And I knew the main thing. Yeah, this is what you're going through. But hey, somebody's going through worse. Praise the Lord, man. Okay? And continue to do the work. You know, even though my vision was depleting, I used to have to hold my phone this close to my face. You know what I'm saying? To see it, you know? But I say, no, no, no. I got to push this word. I got to get out of here, man. Okay? Keeping the main thing the main thing, you know? But that was a temptation at the end of the day. You see? But it says what? It says, I read it again. My son, if thou come to serve your house by Shemal Shai, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart, meaning thy mind, aright, meaning only scriptures. Folk, uh, the scriptures is the focal point, okay? Obedience to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. That is the focal point, right? It says, constantly endure and make no haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Okay, now obviously we're not at the last end, okay? But we're seeing the manifestations of it, okay? And not just in my scenario, I'm hearing of other stories abroad, you know. Uh, uh, it was a brother that I heard of, went blind in both eyes, and he had surgery, and the vision got restored in one eye, and then they're going to work on the other eye, okay. There's, there are a plethora of stories, man. The Most High is, is polishing up his men, okay. Why? Because we're coming up to the last end, you see. Verse uh, verse 4, it says, whatsoever, whatsoever, a tumor, uh, terminal illness, Okay, whatever, whatever it is brought upon you, uh, uh, your, your rib leaving you, okay, it's a whatsoever. Anything that is brought upon you which you can uh, uh, acknowledge that this is of the left-hand side, right? It says whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, you see? And that's what I had to do, okay? Because, you know, <laughs> initially being diagnosed with glaucoma, man, that, that shit. Because with glaucoma, man, you, you, wherever you're at, that's where you're at for the rest of your life, okay? Obviously, what they say, you know? And I constantly, I was praying even with that, you know, taking things and this and that, or the third, to try to help it, you know? I'm not taking for what you say for face value, okay? I'm just telling you what they said, you know? But uh, I could have got in a rut and got depressed and, and said, you know what, brothers? Hey, you know, I'm going to fall back, man. I can't, you know... Uh, and there was a level of depression that had set in, you know, but I constantly endured, like the scripture said, man. And the most I sent brothers to come and sup with me and uh, to help me and also give me rides to camp and this, that, and the third. So the Lord wouldn't allow me to uh, to lose motivation, okay? It says, uh, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. And I was at a lower state, man. You know what I'm saying? Here it is. Uh, the scriptures tell you that this, the, the flesh presses down against the spirit, okay? Which 
In another word, there's depression going down, going on. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay, now here it is. I have a serious infirmity, you know, and it's like, man, can't 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 move out and about like I wanted to. Um, you know, got to depend on people to take me here, take me there, and you know, your eyesight is your confidence, man. You know, and not being able to 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 see, you know, like. Hey, it could have went a whole nother way, but like I said, through the spirit of power, Yahweh Hashem I stayed in prayer, and I understood it wasn't about me. It's not about me, okay? Lord willing, I'm a part of the the, the 144,000. There's 100 and uh, 143,999 men. So it ain't about you, okay? So hey. Like a uh, uh, beloved brother Samak said, you know, you had to go to the infirmary, you know what I'm saying, for a minute. And now you're back, back on the line. And that's another thing. I'm back on the line, back doing shows, as you can see. You know, hey, hey, call hello, you like how about Shmi Al Shah, okay? Um, for gold, uh, let me see, verse five, for gold is tried in the fire. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. You see? And that's that's all it was. That's all it was, man. And Lord willing, he keeps the spirit on me to endure, man. Okay? But, that, hey, that's all the, <laughs> the, 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 the push I needed, man. Okay? And to see how the Most High worked this miracle, man, on my, on my, on my behalf, man. Man, it, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's humbling. Extremely humbling. Okay? And extremely heartfelt, man. And like I said, I want brothers, the reason I'm doing this, I want brothers to be inspired, okay? Because the inspiration comes from Yahweh Bashim Al Shah, but he works through his men, okay? It's not about me, you see? Oh, yeah, and, and just uh, this week, you know, after hearing that bad news, well, what people would call bad news, okay? It's not bad news to me. It's just a condition of my balance, you know what I'm saying? But, um, I had the appointment that Monday, I believe it was Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Guess who pops up at my house? The beloved brother Ramat and uh, Elder Big Gad or Tazadakia. Okay, Elder Tazadakia, Elder Big Gad. Okay, from New York. Okay, and we kicked it in the backyard, you know, for about four or five hours, man. And I'm looking at it like, call the Lord and like y'all by Shemar Shah. Okay, <laughs> one of the top elders from New York, man. You know? Hmm. <laughs> Man, the Lord, the Lord loves us, man. Okay, the Most High have care for His elect. You see, so there was, there's no need for me to be in a bind or in a rut. You know, uh-uh, hell no, nah. right? So uh, let's get another one. This is the Book of Job. The book of Job, chapter 5, uh, verse 17. Okay, Job 5 and 17. It says, Behold, happy is the man whom the Most High correcteth. Okay, and, and obviously that's in both ways. He's corrected us through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim al with the knowledge and understanding. Okay, but also those of us who've had infirmities or who went through things. Okay, and he's corrected it. You know, a man... Hmm. The happiest I've ever been in my life, man. You know, outside of first coming into this thing, man, and, and, and finding out that I was an Israelite, you know, because like I said, you know, amongst me coming in and doing the work, my health started to deteriorate. You know, my, my will to want to do things started to go down, okay, because of that tumor. You know, my ability to smell and taste. So it's like, I'm getting jacked up. And, you know, you had those questions like, Lord, what, what's up, Lord? What you what you need me to do, Lord? What, what, what am I doing wrong? You know, and that's the spirit you're supposed to be in, a humble and contrite spirit. Okay. Right? So it says, um, it says, Happy is the man whom the most high corrective. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. And that's what it was. The Heavenly Father was chastening me. Okay. And and, and, the, and the scriptures tell us about uh, uh chastening. Okay, he chastened us as sons. Because if you don't receive chastening, then you're a bastard. You see? It says, verse 18, for he maketh sore and bindeth up. He woundeth and his hands made whole. You see? 
So ultimately, it was Yahweh Bashim Shah who did all of this, okay? Me actually having that tomb, and I understand that. I get it, okay? And like the Messiah always told people, once they were healed, your sins have been forgiven. Sin no more. You see? So a lot of the uh, infirmities are attributed to what? Sinning, okay? So I understood that. I got it. It was never like, man, I'm actually teaching the word. Why are you doing No, no, no. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We read account what did the Apostle Paul say about himself. Oh, wretched man that I am. Okay? The most, most works in the scriptures. Okay? Not that it's about strictly works, but that's the fact. You know? But he understood. You know? It was, it, it's all, everything is through your Yahweh Bashim al Shah. Verse 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yet in seven, there shall no evil touch thee. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Okay, And you see the Lord went into how he's correcting men and he wounded and he bindeth up. Because these things are coming. Okay, And our, everything that we go through is a trial and, and a test. Okay, Or tribulation uh, uh, for what's coming. Okay. Because really, he wants to develop our mindset to believe wholeheartedly in him. Okay? Because that, like the apostle, uh, uh, elder apostle Tahar said about two weeks ago, maybe a week ago, he said, look, man, we talk a good talk. Okay? But there's going to come a time where we're going to have to walk that walk. Okay? Meaning, we're, we're walking the walk now. You know? But having faith in the times of uh, turmoil and, and trouble. Okay? So let me get one more. I'm going to close this thing out. Uh. Yeah, it's a lock here. You know, I just wanted to get everything out, man, and because I, you know, I said I would. Just trying to be a man of my word. Psalms chapter thirty-four. Hey. Spirit. This is Psalms 34, 18. I was going to read 19, but I'm going to start at 18. It says, Yahweh Shemiah Shai is night unto them that are of a broken heart and save of such as be of a contrite spirit. Okay, like I mentioned before. Okay, when you go through things, what type of spirit are you in? Okay, what are your reins? Okay, are you in the spirit of man, Lord, why you don't do this? No, no, no. Okay, Lord, I have sinned. Therefore, I will bear the indignation of the Lord. That's the spirit we should be in, okay? That's why the scriptures say, charity cover a multitude of sins. And guess what? We've all accumulated a multitude of sins, you see? So when things happen, it's never, why, Lord? No, nah, you know why. You know why, okay? And then ultimately, you, turn, you take it as what? Chastening. The Lord getting you right for the times that we read of, that are coming, that we just read about in Job, the fifth chapter. You see, right? It says, uh, verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Yahweh by Shemiah was shy, deliver them out of them all, okay? And that's the mindset we got to have moving forward, brothers. And this, you know, going through this, what I went through, you know, has further built me up in understanding that he got us, man. He got us. Okay, we ain't got ourselves. <laughs> you know, we're a worm, you know? So it's all about our faith, okay? Yeah, we're faith-based Israelites, okay? Because we have no might. And a lot of these pseudo-Israelite groups are going to find that out the hard way, okay? But nonetheless, brothers, keep the faith. Only believe, okay? The Lord, the Lord, the Lord's arms are not slack that he cannot save, man, okay? And in the meantime, hey, like the scriptures say, we're going to have to be merry and have abundance, okay? And all the other promises that are going to happen on this side, okay? When people are starving, we're going to eat. When people are thirsty, we're gonna drink. Okay. The people laughing at us, they're gonna they're gonna turn to sorrow and we're gonna laugh at them. All of these things are written in the scriptures, man. Okay. Only believe, brothers, and keep the faith. Okay. So uh Lord willing, this was edifying. And uh, you know, the water for those of you who rolled it out with me, you know what I'm saying? Uh you know, I just like I said, I wanted to convey all of this, like I said from the beginning, even before I had surgery. You know, I wanted to get all of this out, and I couldn't compile it all in one video. Impossible. It took four installments 
you know, but uh, Thawada for uh, riding it out with me and Salakia for the long windedness. But, um, hey, call Halayim like Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Akak with Ash. So I believe I hit the point, and uh, like I say, Lord willing, this was edifying. Farm Yasharala and the Baba Ball. Shalom.